coming. Amen. There's going to be a great time coming one of these days. Right. Amen. Well, birds will get you to drink. I'll, I'll say a little bit of something normally I don't. Well, but we're at my home church. I've been playing gospel music for over 30 years, and this is the first time I've ever been at my own homecoming playing for my homecoming. Because I've always went to everybody else. So the devil had to stick, stick his nose into this little thing. But thankfully, good friend Mike Crowder has stepped in to fill in and take the place of Randy Davis for this weekend. So it's good to have friends. Yes. Uh, we started this ministry, I'll tell you a little bit about it. We started this ministry and we're thanking God for wanting us to go to nursing homes. The sad part of life is, is we ain't getting no younger. You might have a friend or a family member or a loved one that's in a nursing home. If you think what we're doing could brighten their day, let me know. I'll just go ahead and put the plug in. I hope that's okay, guys. <laughs> This is what we're trying to do, and we're thankful that Fairfield, my church, has given us a second opportunity to come and practice on y'all. And we appreciate it. Thank you. We love Robert. You know, back before I got saved, I wasn't a good boy. I was saved of decently young age, but I should have been saved a lot younger. But anyhow, my dad used to tell me when I was growing up, he used to say, Virgil, you ain't never going to amount to nothing. Because of who I was at that time. You know, it was December the 12th, 1999, Victory Missionary Baptist. I was changed. Yeah. 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 I thank God for that. I know I'm saved. I can feel that I'm saved. Amen. 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 You know, anybody that's here today, if you feel there's a tug in your heart and God's pulling at you, don't turn around. Don't turn your back, God. Don't be like I wanted to be. I was lighting up with all day during the service went before I got saved. But finally, when I turned loose, that was the best day of my life. Amen. Amen. Woo! Yeah, Lord. <laughs> I'm trying to sing it around the lake. Reminds me of this song. People said I never make They said I never see through. Well, they don't know what keeps me going. I guess they never have.
probably any of you know, but this is my daughter, Brianna. I'm not just throwing kissy face <laughs> No, we've sang a lot. We sang a lot of places uh, back, in, back a long time ago with Robert and over on the boys when she was real little. And she used to come up after we get done singing and she'd just grab me right around the leg. And if I'd walk up, she'd say, This is my daddy. Yeah. <laughs> I was the proudest papa ever. I still am. I'm just so glad I've got her here right beside me. Yes, amen. She's a blessing to me, the whole family, but it just anybody to mention.
sing today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear you. We're going to do another song here, and we'll, we'll get down out of the way. We don't want to do too many. We want someone to do what the Lord wants us to do, and not just keep singing just because we love to sing. Sometimes I may say I've got one more, but then by the end of that, the Lord may lay another one on me. So look out. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. I've got a lot of copper tone damage in my hand, my wrist, and it always just bothers me. It's hard to hold a kick, so I have to, every time I play, I just try to shake it out. So, God bless you. All. Thank you.
Appreciate the getting to every one of you being here. Brianna said, I came back out with my microphone though, and she said, you look like you're ready to give the news report. And I said, I am. I'm going to give the good news of the gospel today. So. If you have your Bibles this morning, open them up to the book of Ephesians chapter 2 is where we begin. And our children's church is stepping out in the back right now. So if you'd like to go down to the children's church, you can head over to the back doors right there. Appreciate all of our children's church workers and those who volunteer to go and be part of that ministry to the church. Appreciate them very, very much. Ephesians chapter 2. I want to share a message with you this morning entitled Homecoming in the Household of God. And we're going to begin here in Ephesians chapter 2, but we'll be in some other scriptures as well. Some children were asked to create a poster and write a paragraph describing what home meant to them. A seven-year-old described home this way in his paragraph. He wrote, home to me means playing, family, and love. I drew some of my favorite toys like crayons, my teddy bear, and the ukulele. My family is my mom, dad, and Mindy. My home has lots of love and a shooting star. Seven-year-old point of view what home is. A 12-year-old gave another description of what home means to her. She said, home to me is different than anywhere else. It's laughter about new and old things. It's fur and hair that can fill the oceans. It's pain, love, and a whole lot of cooking. Home is where my bed stays. Home is where the heart is. Every second I want to be there. My family is there. What is better? Home is love, she wrote. I like that. Today we're having homecoming, and the Lord led me to share a message focusing on the home in homecoming. And I wonder what home means to you. Specifically this morning, how would you describe your church home in a paragraph? What comes to mind when you think of your church home? If you had to make a poster about your church home, what pictures would you be sure to include on that poster? Let me just tell you, I love, love, love my church family, don't you? And I love my church home. And what a beautiful home God's given us to worship in each week. Brandon, put that next slide up there. Our children's ministry posted some pictures of the 20 children that were here on Wednesday night playing outside. And the grass was so green. The sky was so blue. The beautiful cornfield set in the background there. There were big smiles on the kids' faces. Isn't that just a beautiful picture? Uh, what a beautiful home God has given us uh, to minister in and to reach Amen. these kids. We're so blessed here at Fairfield, the beautiful place God has given us to call our church home. And I praise God for all that he is doing right here in our church family. Would you agree with me that he's doing some amazing things at Fairfield? Amen. Just this past year, the Lord has blessed us tremendously in our finances. Our budget for 2022 was $132,000. The receipts for the receipts for the year were $176,000, which means you gave $44,000 more than was than what was anticipated. Praise the Lord for that. Let's keep it up and give the Lord a hand for that. And because of your giving, the church is now debt free in this past year. And something I'm really thankful for as a church, we gave in the past year nearly $25,000 to missions. To missions. And I believe that is one reason God is blessing us financially. We're supporting God's work, not just here, but all over the world. This past year, our BBS enrollment was up. We had 104 people enrolled. And of those 104 people, we saw the Lord save eight people here Bible school this year. And I'm so thankful for the 14 wonderful people that have joined our church in the past year. And they, they don't just sit and watch the service, but these people are some of our hardest, have become some of our hardest workers in different areas of ministry in our church. We found places of ministry to serve in. We were also blessed this past year to baptize nine folks and saw many more salvations. As a matter of fact, I don't think he'll mind me sharing this. As our interim youth leader, Andrew got to lead a young man to the Lord this past Wednesday in youth group. God is blessing our 
church family, and I'm so, so thankful. God is blessing this place that we call home here at Fairfield. If I was looking for a church home, I'd be excited if the Lord led me to a place like Fairfield where the church family is on fire for Jesus. And I want you to know that I am so thrilled that the Lord led me to be your pastor here at Fairfield. And you are my family, and I love you. I love you so much. I count it a great privilege to serve the Lord with you. It's hard to believe this, this February I will, be, I will have been with you at Fairfield for five years. It feels like we've just begun. So, I'm happy, so happy to be part of Fairfield. I'm, I'm even more happy to be part of the household of God. Brianna, we are a child of the one true king. We're part of his household. I, I, I pray everybody in here can say that this morning, that you are a child of the one true king. Today, as the title of the message indicates, we uh, celebrate homecoming in the household of God. In Ephesians, where I had to turn, it's a great book of the Bible that beautifully describes uh, what it means for our church to be home to us. So let's, let's take a look at today and, and focus on Scripture uh, here from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, just a moment. And Paul writes, now therefore... You're no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Christian, you are a part of the household of God. You're no longer a foreigner. You're no longer a stranger, but you're part of the family. So welcome home. Welcome home. And this household that we belong to has been around a long time. Its foundation was built on the apostles, the scripture says. It was built on the prophets, the scripture says. And praise his name, our chief cornerstone of this house is Jesus Christ. So welcome to the family if you're a child of God this morning. Welcome home. I'm excited to celebrate homecoming with you today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the great time of worship we've had. Thank you that we can celebrate that we're a child of yours, a child of the one true King. Thank you that we can live in the power of the cross, as they just sang about. Thank you for what you did on the cross for us. Father, I pray now, these next few minutes, that you would get me out of the way. Nobody wants to hear a word from me today, but we need desperately a word from you today. So you just use me to be your mouthpiece today. That's all I ask. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, God's Word gives us a description of how we are to live and what we are expected to do as members of His household. So we're going to take a look at five of those expectations today. And there's an outline in your bulletin if you'd like to follow along. And so the first one is this. As members of the household of God, number one, we are to work together in God's service. Work together in God's service. I'm going to apologize to you. Uh, it's not Regina's fault. It's my fault. I put the wrong scripture in there. It should be 1 Corinthians 3.9, not Romans 3.9. So you can scratch out Romans there. Right? 1 Corinthians did. 1 Corinthians 3.9 tells us this. We are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field. God's building. Hey, we all make mistakes, don't we? I put the wrong scripture in your bulletin. That's a great example that none of us are perfect, but we're going to be co-workers. we got to work together, so we have to forgive one another when so one of us messes up, don't we? We're to be forgiving. <clears throat> we're not only family, but we are co-workers. We are to work together in God's service. When the church family is functioning as God has created it to, work, to function, it's a beautiful thing. Wednesday evenings here at Fairfield are especially awesome time to see the Fairfield family working together in God's service. We have adults in here in the sanctuary praying together for church members and those we love and then studying God's word together. We have several adults working with the 20 kids like we had this Wednesday, dividing them into different age groups and teaching them the word of God on Wednesday evenings. We've got adults working with our youth group. We've got some men and women cooking for the youth and children each week. We have others serving the youth and children each week. We have some that go and purchase the food so that it can be cooked. They purchase drinks so the kids have something to drink. We have others who donate to that cause so the kids can have something to eat and drink. 
This past Wednesday, we had somebody make a gift basket for the family who moved to the new house across the street. And so we had owners who delivered it to them and spent some time talking to them and inviting them to our church. We're co-workers together. We're all, we all have a place in the family of God, in the household of God, to be serving the Lord as we work together. And being co-workers should have no negative connotation. It's a joy. It's an amazing privilege to be working together for the Lord. Amen? And as we do that, we're going to grow in our relationship with Jesus, but we do it especially that we might see somebody come to know Jesus as their Savior, as we did this past Wednesday. But being co-workers is not limited to Wednesdays. There are so many other ministries to get involved in here at Fairfield. And if you are looking for a place at Fairfield to serve, come see me. And I'll point you in the right direction so that you can find a place to serve in. Because there are plenty of ministries that have places available for you to serve. And so if you're looking for a place, you come see me. And I'll get you pointed in the right direction. Because we are to be, as members of the household of God, co-workers for the Lord. Secondly this morning, we are... To worship and give thanks together. We're to worship and give thanks together. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16 tell us this. Colossians 3, 15 and 16 say, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Have you ever wondered why we sing together in a time of worship? Why do we have these songs? Why do we have these hymns? Why do we sing together? Well, there you go. We're instructed to in the Word of God, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 16 says that these hymns are to teach us and to admonish us. In other words, these songs should not only be a form of worship, but we should be singing songs that teach us the Word of God, singing songs to teach us to obey His commands. So, yes, songs are definitely to be sung in worship, but they're also to be sung the songs that we make sure that they are scriptural because they're to teach us the Word of God. And know how precious it is to sing and praise the Lord together. There's not many things that move my spirit more than a congregation join their hearts together and their voices together in worship, not to be heard by one another, but to offer praises to God as a sweet-smelling aroma. We come and we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, one song says. Verse 15 reminds us there that we are called as one body to be thankful. We're called to be thankful. We worship and we give thanks together. This past Wednesday, it was shared in our, in our uh, prayer time that two people that we had been praying for because they were having surgeries had gone through their surgery successfully. And so we gave thanks for that. And then Rodney and Jeannie shared with us Wednesday night. Their grandson got saved this past week and was going to get baptized. So you know what we did? We all stopped and we gave, we prayed and we gave thanks to the Lord for His blessings. So we give thanks together for things like these, but we all, as members of the household of God, boy, don't we have so much to be thankful for. We're brothers and sisters in Christ, not because of something we did, but because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came on earth to live. He lived a sinless life. He was, he was accused unjustly. He was crucified. He became the atoning sacrifice on the cross to pay the price for our sins. He was placed in a borrowed tomb, but the grave couldn't hold him. He conquered death and rose again. And he's now sitting at the right hand of God, ever making intercession for us. There's a reason for you to give thanks this morning. There's a reason for you to lift your voice in worship. There's a reason to make what worship on Sunday morning something more than a Sunday morning tradition. Amen. Because all we did was believe and receive. We don't come together on Sunday mornings out of tradition or out of routine or out of obligation. We come to worship and to give thanks together. Can you just say thank you, Lord, with me now? Thank you, Lord. Who would lift their hands in the air and raise the roof this morning and say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. And oh, it's the name of Jesus that unites us. And it's the name of Jesus is what the gospel teaches us 
that it is crucially important, for there's no other name given under heaven by, by which we must be saved. So thirdly, as the household of God, we are to defend the truth of the gospel together. We are to defend the truth of the gospel together. Romans 16, 17 encourages us this. Romans 16, 17 says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn, and avoid them. You see, as members of the household of God, we are to be united. And we are to watch for those who would cause division in this household and avoid them. We are to watch for those who would cause offense to this household and avoid them. We are to watch for those who would teach anything contrary to the doctrine of the gospel, which is the word of God, and avoid them. It's a very serious issue not to be taken lightly. Romans 16, 18 goes on to say that these who would do these are not serving the Lord, but rather serving themselves with their smooth talking and flattering speech that deceives people. You see, church, the thing that unites us together is the truth of the Word of God. The truth of the Word of God unites us. So everything we do, everything we teach, every song we sing, every ministry that we support must, must, must be founded upon the Word of God and the Word of God alone. If we allow false teachings to come into the Lord's household, then that unity will be extinguished, will become ununited. And so there's a great responsibility that comes with defending the gospel. And it's this. You've got to know the gospel. You've got to know the gospel. You, as a member of God's household, need to study God's word. Don't leave it up to the preacher. Don't leave it up to the Sunday school teacher. You need to study. Because in this world we live in, at some point, you are going to be questioned. Or you're going to have your own question about an issue. And the answer that we find needs to always come from the Word of God, not our own opinion. So together we defend the precious Word of God. Together we are to protect this household at Fairfield from the influence of the enemy. Together we are to protect the integrity of this family of believers. It's not always easy and sometimes difficult conversations need to happen, but that's okay. Because God's word must prevail in this place above all else. Together we are to defend the truth of the gospel. Now put your still toe boots on for a minute because I'm going to address a touchy subject next, all right? And that's the fourth point this morning. We are to be committed to God's household. We are to be committed to God's household as we are instructed in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25. Which say, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. It all boils down to this, family member, you need to be here. You need to be here. Church attendance completely changed in 2020. People began staying home in many churches, including ours, thought it would be safer at the beginning of the pandemic to have virtual services. I don't regret that decision at all. It probably saved some lives, saved some lives, say what, say what you will. But I know that we have some church members that are probably watching right now that have health issues, and they would love to be at church this morning, but they can't come. I know for a fact that many would love to be here if they could. Yeah, yeah. The church needs to get serious again about commitments. They say if you do something seven times, it becomes a habit. And I'm afraid many people have chosen to stay home far more than seven times, so skipping church has become a habit. And so many are all, always willing to offer an excuse. There's a song about that, you know. Excuses, excuses, you'll hear them every day. And the devil, he'll supply them if from church you'll stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep them folks away from church, he offers them excuses. In the summer, it's too hot. In the winter, it's too cold. 
In the springtime when the weather's just right, you find someplace else to go. Well, it's up to the mountains or down to the beach or to visit some old friend. Or just stay home and kind of relax and hope some kid folks will drop in. The church benches, they're too hard. That choir sings way too loud. Boy, you know how nervous you get when you're sitting in a great big crowd. The preacher, he's too young. Or maybe he's too old. The sermons, they're not hard enough. Maybe they're too bold. His voice is much too quiet-like. Sometimes he gets too loud. He needs to have more dignity. Or else he's way too proud. Well, the sermons, they're too long and maybe they're too short. He ought to preach the word with dignity instead of stomp and snort. Well, that preacher we've got must be the world's, world's most stuck-up man. One of the ladies told me the other day, he didn't even shake my hand. <laughs> excuses, excuses. You'll hear them every day. And the devil, he'll supply them. If from church, you'll stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep them folks away from church, he offers them excuses. Man, listen to me. You can be filled with one of two things. Excuses to stay home. Or excitement about what God is doing in this church home. Amen. I want you to be excited about what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. I had somebody tell me the other day, I don't want to miss church because I don't want to miss seeing what God is going to do. That's the attitude we need to have. That's the attitude we need to come with. If we'd all be excited about coming to worship, it absolutely would change the way we worship and we wouldn't have enough seats in this place for everybody who's excited to be here. Listen, if you get excited to go shopping, if you get excited to go to Kitchen Forge, if you get excited to go to a ball game, if you get excited to go out and eat, if you get excited to go to a concert, shouldn't you be even more excited to get together with your family in the household of God, to be in God's presence together and worship Him? I mean, come on, church. Before COVID, we averaged nearly 70 in Sunday school. We're lucky to have 30 now. Some Sundays we have nearly 100 in attendance in the sanctuary. Other Sundays we have about 60. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get around here. <laughs> Where is your commitment? Where is your commitment? I'm just plain and simple calling you out today. Where is your commitment, church? You need to be here. You need to be here. Don't forsake the assembly of yourself together. That's not my opinion. That is the word of God. Amen. Take his command and do what you will. But I'm telling you, you need to be here. And the reason you need to be here is because of what Jesus Christ did for you. Yes. Yes. He gave up 33 plus years in heaven, come to earth and live and die in our place. Surely, surely we can give him at least a couple of hours. Sunday morning. Back to him. After all, it's him that unites us as the household of God. Fifthly and finally this morning, we are united in Jesus Christ. We are united in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. We all have very different backgrounds, but we are one in Christ Jesus. It's by His Spirit that we were baptized into this household, into one body, the verse says. It's by His sacrifice that we were able to become a member of the family of God, a child of the one true King. We are united in Jesus Christ. The Brooklyn Tabernacle sings a great song with exactly that title. We're united in Jesus Christ. The lyrics go like this. We are united in Jesus Christ. We are the soldiers of the light. We don't wrestle flesh and blood, but principalities of the dark. We do our marching to one beat, crushing the enemy under our feet. We're mighty in our stand with God's word in our hand. In our hearts we have a vision. We've made our decision to show the Father's love with great power from above. Let us reach this generation, every tribe and every nation, for we've overcome the world by the blood of Christ the Lamb. We are united in Jesus Christ. Church, it's Jesus that unites us. Amen. Amen.
It's Him that unites us. And it's because of Jesus that we all can have a place at home in the household of God. Do you need to have a homecoming today <laughs> through Jesus Christ? I'm going to ask the group to come on up and get ready for invitation time. Do you need to have a homecoming today in Jesus Christ? Listen, you can become part of His precious family. You can become a child of the one true King. You can be looking forward one day to heaven being your home for all of eternity. If you'll just believe in Jesus and receive Him into your heart today. Let's pray. Bow your heads with you. Father, we thank you for your word. Sometimes it's tough to hear. Sometimes it's tough to share. But it's the truth. So Father, we thank you that you are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. Your son Jesus said. We know He's the only way to heaven. If we want to get to heaven, I'll have heaven to be our home for all of eternity. Jesus said, there's no other way to the Father but through Him. And so this morning I pray that if there be somebody sitting under the sound of my voice today, whether here in this sanctuary or listening online, and they couldn't remember a day when they ask you to come into their hearts and forgive them and save them, if they don't have a day where they can remember doing that, I pray your Holy Spirit would convict them of their need to be saved right now. And they would make that decision to choose you. All heads bowed and all eyes closed still. <coughs> this morning, if You've heard the Word of God, the song, and you've heard the Word of God, and the message, and the Holy Spirit's been sent on your hearts. And this morning, you need to know that heaven's going to be your home one day, but you can't say that you do right now. Here's your opportunity to pray and ask the Lord to forgive you and come in your heart and say, I'm going to say a simple prayer, and if you'd like to choose Jesus today, and you'd like to know that heaven's going to be your home, I want you to pray right where you are. See your heart. Just repeat after me in meanings. I pray you are. Pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess to you that I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son. And I believe that He died on that cross. To shed his blood is a payment for my sin. Please forgive me for my sin. Come into my heart and save me. I want to live my life to glorify you. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you prayed in that prayer just now, under the authority of God's words, which says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you shall be saved. If you prayed that prayer this morning for the very first time, and you meant it, I want you to know that God saved you just now. He saved you. And if you prayed that prayer just now and you meant it, Without anybody looking around, would you just lift your hand right where you are and let me know this morning that you prayed and asked Jesus to save you today? Anybody in this place? Anybody pray that prayer for the first time today, asking Jesus to come to your heart and save you? All right. All eyes back up on me now. Perhaps this morning you know that you're saved, <laughs> but you're not a member of one of God's homes. This is the God's home at Fairfield. There's many other homes, many other places of worship. And I'm so thankful for this home that I get to call, have to call my home here at Fairfield. If you're looking for a place to call home, I want to invite you to come and join us here at Fairfield. We need you. 
We've got places of ministry for you to serve in, for you to serve alongside together as we are at work together as the children of God. I want to invite you to come and join our church today. If God leaves that on your heart to do that. We're going to have a time of invitation now. I invite you to stand and sing. I'll be here at the altar. You respond as God needs you to respond today. It's not too late to choose Jesus. Come, catch me by the hand here at this altar and say, I, I need Jesus. We'll pray together personally up here. If you'd like to join the church, you come and join the church today as they sing.
before we take that offering. So you can come be prepared to give. As we said, uh, our church has done great in uh, supporting missions all over the world. And this is another opportunity to support missions right here in Tennessee. A lot of church plants. A lot of We don't think about places in Tennessee without churches. But there's a lot of places in Tennessee who don't have churches like everywhere on every corner like we do here in East Tennessee. And uh, so they need the churches that will present what we said this morning, the true gospel of Jesus Christ in places. So you know, we can support that through our giving. Um, to the Wednesday night, the 21st, we're going to have a church-wide fellowship beginning at 6.30. So more details about what that will entail will come in your bullets. And, and don't forget our appreciation basket for Isaac is still on the table back there. And if you'd like to make any donations for our Wednesday activities, uh, make sure and uh, get those over here. Cookies and all those good things kids and you like to enjoy. I believe we've got a food pantry coming up on the 24th. The 24th this month. So uh, looking forward to that as well. Reaching this community with, uh, some, with those needs and those who might need food. Uh, we'll be able to reach them on the 24th. Anything else that I'm forgetting or anything that somebody, God's got on somebody's heart this morning that they need to share? Something you need to share today. Anything on anybody's heart today? Yes, yes. And the Pam Martin family. Anything else? God, I'd just like to say I'm glad to say Amen. I'm thankful for the opportunity that God has given me through this. I'm thankful for everybody. Love it, God. Amen. We love you too. I'm sure there's enough to eat. If there's not, you can have my plate because I don't need it that bad, as you can tell. So you're welcome to have my plate. If you're, I know there's enough. There's probably more than enough to probably take to, box, to go boxes home. But don't run off and go buy lunch somewhere. We got better than anything you can get in the restaurant right across the way over here. So stay and join us for our fellowship dinner. Uh, we'd love for you too today. I appreciate everybody who cooked and uh, brought something for uh, for our meal today for us to enjoy. We're going to bless the food, and then I'm going to I'll ask us to allow our senior adults, those 65 and up, to make their way first so they don't have to stay in line so long. Um, and they probably want to the majority of the food. So we're going to let our senior adults go first, yes? Uh, Vicky gets to join that group this week. Oh, good. Yeah. There you go. Somebody else had a birthday today. Who was it? Yeah. Happy birthday today. You're 17. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm getting off. 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 <laughs> All right, well, we'll bless our meal now and enjoy the time of fellowship. Uh, there's no time to stay and eat until it's all gone, eat until it's gone if you want. So uh, that'll be that'll be great. I'm going to ask our deacon chairman, Anthony uh, Jones, to bless our meal, please, before we head over there. Well, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your house this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings and all the things you can do for us today in the day out. Thank you, Lord, for the message that we heard this morning. And sometimes we need to get our, our toes stepped on, Lord, with hope that uh, we step up to the plate and we do what's right and we do uh, and uh, work, work for your glory, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to uh, be with us. Thank you, Lord, for the group that's here this morning, Lord, and son. You've done a uh, fabulous job, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We want you to bless them, continue blessing them as they go from church to church. A blessing of others, Lord. We ask you, Lord, now to uh, bless our food for the nourishment of our body. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, Anthony. I went over there and Lorraine says, there are eight.